Well, I don't really want to have this conversation. <laughs> I feel like it's needed, and that's why I called Craig Morgan. It's another edition of Southwest Bias. Get that stuff out of here. It's Southwest Bias. Coming to you live from Studio K, presented by Circle K. Join that inner circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions do apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. I just want to do a mental health check with you, yeah. Craig, because you, Espo, Jesse Freeman collaborated on a very well-written, I struggle to say great article because <laughs> of how much it pulls on the heartstrings over on gophnext.com, recapping the worst collapses in ASU, Cardinals, Coyotes, D-backs, and Suns history. So Valley Sports Valley Sports. History. You're you're welcome, Wildcats fans. The facts that you don't have to yeah we go make you suffer. This. Yeah, yeah. you we we know that you sometimes suffer enough. But but, but here's the truth, right? Like Wildcat what? basketball, they got a lot of good things to you know well, look I, back yeah, upon, but, right? Well, I mean, I know they haven't I mean, won well, a national championship well, in a while or gotten well, to a final four, but there's some good seasons down yes, there. It's not like good basketball, it's not like teams. ASU basketball. Okay, let's just, let's just right. put that out there. Greg, okay. we are already going to the gutter. We don't need to dig. Well, any deeper okay listen man this this is the world that i lived in for a quarter <laughs> century covering the coyotes so yeah. it, this is this is old hat to me uh, honestly but for the rest of you yeah we're calling this episode hello darkness the yeah. valley's old friend no for seriously though like i know a lot of valley sports fans they're hardened at this point so you're probably <laughs> watching or listening to this which if you're watching give a thumbs up subscribe to phnx sports if you're listening thank you make sure you rate five stars and subscribe and whatever feed that you're hearing this is probably going to go in a lot of them considering a lot of teams have had misery in their franchise history let's save the coyotes for last we'll get to an old friend last let's okay. start with the team is, which is the reason why we're even doing this whole dang thing, Craig. That's the Arizona Diamondbacks. We'll save this year for last. Let's go in chronological order. August and September of 2008, the Diamondbacks, they were playing real well. Mm -hmm. They had a great pitching staff. They had a four and a half game lead on the division, leading the Dodgers. Diamondbacks go 0-5 against the Dodgers in their next 10 days. Their division lead evaporated by the early September day of September 5th. It was never recovered. Craig, what do you remember about the 2008 collapse? <laughs> I remember <laughs> the it, laugh. It, it, it felt a lot like the 2018 collapse, which yeah. we're going to get to next, and which Jesse really captured well, I thought, in his mm -hmm. subhead. The first one for September two, two, 2008 was Dodgers catch fire, eliminate D-backs. And then in 2018, August, September, Dodgers catch fire, eliminate D-backs part two. Ten years later, it's the follow-up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Come on. That's what it was. I, I, I can't say specifically what I remember about 2008, but I remember the collapse. The, the more recent ones are the ones that stick in my memory mm -hmm. in 2018. Obviously, we, we got some feels after that. Right. They went to a World Series unexpectedly. But that it, it's worse, I think, when the Diamondbacks collapsed to the Dodgers. Of all teams— yeah. There's such a hatred for the Valley. There's, you know, there's, let's I think be they're honest. public enemy number one. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of an inferiority complex. Let's let's put it out there. Let's Craig, just go ahead and say it. We're already talking about yeah. the bad parts, man. Yeah. <laughs> but when it's the Dodgers of all teams, yeah. yeah. Oh, congratulations that you won, you know, with your whatever payroll, whatever it was at that point, far more than most teams get to spend. Don't get me started on Major League Baseball's lack of a salary cap and the inequity that it creates on the field. But mm -hmm. yeah, when it's the Dodgers, it really stinks. Yeah, and it also stings when you're 15 games over 500 if we're moving to 2018. Let's just, let's say it's going to be between 2018 and 2024 for which team was, which is the worst collapse for the Diamondbacks. Uh, 71 and 56 on August 22nd. By the end of the season, you're just two games above 500. You lost 24 of your final 35 games. And of course, the Dodgers end up in first place in the NL West. What is it about the Diamondbacks about being one of the best teams in baseball and then just somehow completely forgetting how to play baseball by the end of the season? I, I think it's in their Valley DNA. It's in their Valley DNA. And of course, that's what happened this year. Obviously, mm. you Diamondbacks fans, uh, you know all too well. And even in the poll that PHNX Diamondbacks put out, a whopping 77.7% .7 of you voted for this season's the Diamondbacks fumbling a seven-game lead in the wild card race. I believe they had over a 90% chance mm -hmm. of making the playoffs, a 96.8% chance prediction of making the playoffs at a certain point in the season, holding the top wild card spot, a seven game lead. And it all comes down to yeah. it. Not even being in your own hands, Craig, you're watching a Braves Mets doubleheader where they end up both <laughs> celebrating with each other after splitting that series and both of them making the NL wild card. This one 
stung. Yeah, th- that's why this one rises to the top for me, Eric, because, well, first off, they're coming off a World Series appearance, as we just talked about. They just the, spent so much money. They spent a ton of money to get better. Yeah. And some of that didn't work out, as Ken Kendrick laid out very clearly. Um, you really had a feeling this season might be special for the Diamondbacks. Mm-hmm. They were building something. Tori Lavelle looked like he had everything working. And to have it collapse like this, and then like you just said, it's such a classic Valley thing to not even be in control of it. And you can make the argument, of course, if they had won well, more games, they would right, have been in control. Yes. But to sit there and have to watch on the final day of the season, not even take the field and have a hand in it, and then have this crazy format where each team in that doubleheader knows, oh, he needs a split. Mm-hmm. What incentive was there for the team that won the first game to go hard in game two? There's Pride. not. It should be a format that should be changed. It's a bad format, but... It, it makes I mean, sense that it victimized, as I mentioned in the story, it may, makes sense that it victimized the Valley, just like the old lottery format victimized the Coyotes <laughs> when Edmonton jumped up and got Connor McDavid. And oh, by the way, they changed the rule after that. Sorry, we, I know we're okay. saving the Coyotes, no, okay. but let it out. I got to. Let, no, let it out. It's okay. Listen, the thing with this Diamondback season is it is the Diamondbacks' fault, right? You can point at everything else. Mm-hmm. You can point at all the other the collapse. You can point at the weather. Because the weather is the only reason why there was yeah. a doubleheader on this day in the first place. The MLB didn't plan for this Doesn't to happen. That make right? you wonder? The weather <laughs> intervened. The weather, the it was weather, the, valley. the Diamondbacks could yeah. not. They yeah. said they could not make the playoffs. But the Diamondbacks really got in their own way. And they did. you think back to multiple points in the season where they just had terrible stretches. I believe it was a July stretch where Paul Seawald blew about two or three consecutive saves. And again, you win one of those games, you are in the playoffs. It is that the Brewers thin game, right? Of That's the one I yeah. think about. It's that thin. Of a margin, you had an 8-2 lead over the Braves in a game mm-hmm. that the Braves ended up coming back and winning. And I think what makes it sting the most is because Diamondbacks fans were riding on a high, again, not just coming off of the World Series, but the fact that a relatively cheap ownership decided to spend not just <laughs> some money, but a lot of money, put together what was presumed to be one of the best starting rotations in baseball. Right. Yep. And then you have a Cattell Marte near MVP style season. Of course, he gets injured at the end, which kind of stops his run. But yeah. he still played like one. Corbin Carroll bounces back. Christian Walker has an incredible season. You really had so many good parts. They had the best offense in all of baseball. And they missed the playoffs. Yeah, I think that's clearly number one. Let's move on to the Suns. There's okay? always next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see if they continue to spend money. Let's go chronologically with the Suns. Start okay. with blowing a 3-1 lead in the 1995 conference semifinals against the Rockets. Now, this is the one that got the least amount of votes out of the three options on the PHNX Suns Twitter poll. But I do think this one does warrant a lot of consideration, considering the fact that a Non-Michael Jordan-led East was waiting for you on the other side of this conference semifinal. Suns blew a 3-1 lead against the Rockets, who ended up, of course, going on and winning a championship Second straight that championship, year. Yeah. What, do you, uh, what, what comes to mind when I rip that Band-Aid off? Well, first off, that they blew a 3-1 series lead against this team. But yeah, Jordan had retired after the Bulls won their third straight title in 93. Mm-hmm. There was this, this opening. There was this void that somebody needed to fill. And of course, Hakeem Olajuwon was... One of the legendary players of the NBA, yes. but I thought the Rockets were a flaw, flawed team, and I thought the Suns, if they came back with the sort of effort that they came back with, or came with when Charles first arrived here in 92-93, they were the favorite. They should have mm-hmm. won it. You can talk to people on the inside, and I think the reason this probably finished lower is because it happened so long ago. That's a fair. lot of people don't remember it, but if if you talk to people who were around for it, this one still be, may be number one in their minds. I don't think Charles committed the same way. And I think a lot of people on the inside Mm -hmm. will tell you he did not commit to the same sort of training that he did that first season when he was so driven and so convinced that they were going to win the title, even when they fell down to the Bulls early on in that series. We just didn't see the same Charles Barkley. And this two-year gap where Jordan retired, where there was opportunity, the Rockets rose up and took it both seasons. And the problem was... Again, you were up 3-1. Mm. You had a, a double-digit lead at halftime, right? Barkley has 23 rebounds in Game 7. KJ has 46 points. But it all comes down to freaking Mario Eli Ugh, and the, the kiss. kiss of death. death. So we'll, we'll keep that in consideration. I do think it definitely deserves more than 8.2%. One thing we should mention, Danny Manning was out, too. Yes, like, and, and that's the huge thing. injury. The like, in the league. like In 93, people are like, oh, if Cedric Sabalos had been healthy, they would have beat the Bulls. And I just laugh at that. No, no, you wouldn't have. You weren't beating Michael Jordan. But if Danny Manning had played, they might have gotten past the Rockets. So just another that, thing to think yeah, about. Yeah, it hurts. It's something that you can't control. Yeah. 
Something where I remember watching and feeling completely out of control was Game 7 of the 2022 Western Conference semifinals where the Mavericks absolutely routed the Suns on the road Mm. in Footprint Center, 123-90. to This was the Suns team that won, of course, the most games in franchise history at 64. The power of friendship, the power of continuity, the power of internal development. That game stung, Craig. Not only did it stink, it's like, where was the compete level? Right, and, where, and there's theories. There are theories yeah, as to what's going on with the team and everything. Chemistry, all that. But, but not even just get some. Don't care. Some say health, but yeah, at, the yeah, yeah. The, at the end of the day, there was zero effort. Yeah, they were dead exactly. to rights at halftime. I don't care what the situation is. I right. need to see fight from a team in game seven You're in playing. that situation. Yeah. You're playing, and they didn't show up, and that's mm-hmm. really distressing. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. We could dive into that one, but I think the easiest thing to sum it up is they didn't show up. The Mavericks did, and that is now a stain on their record, and it is a big mm-hmm. stain in the now rivalry between Luka Doncic and the Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns. I think the next one, though, it takes the cake just simply because of the stakes that come along mm-hmm. with it. The 2021 NBA Finals, the Suns were up 2-1, 2-0 over the Bucks, and of course, Giannis... Drew Holiday, Mike Budenholzer, now current Sunset coach, are able to storm back and take the win, not even in seven games. They take it in six. I do remember, I don't know why I was so confident considering Valley Sports history, but I remember thinking the Suns had this one wrapped up. Yeah, you go up 2-0 in a a series, you should be able to win the series. You're talking about the other team needing to win Mm -hmm. four of the next five, not let alone just sweeping the next four, four. which you don't expect to happen. And listen— he did play like a Greek god, right? I, I, yeah, I know Giannis it, absolutely Giannis did. was unbelievable in that mm-hmm. series, but you can't blow a 2-0 series lead in the final. It, it was this close. It was this close. This franchise, as far as NBA franchises go, uh, I think more than any other, how do they not have a title at this point? This has been such a consistently good franchise. Top five how, winning percentage in how NBA How do history. they not have a title by now? They've, they've had some crazy occurrences along the way. They've run into tough people. Tough opponents like the Michael Jordan led Bulls, but at this point, the Suns should have a title. And this was probably their best shot. You go up 2 0 in a series, you got to close it out. It always feels like something gets in their way, but this is one of the mm. few times where it actually just felt like, yes, there were health problems. I mean, Abdel Nader got finals minutes, of course. Like they were definitely struggling on the health side of things, but at that point in the season, Everyone everybody is. is. Yep. Right. Out of all of their kind of misery, game seven, you can point to, you know, there are theories that the team had COVID. Whatever. In the 3-1 lead to Houston, it's like that team is just better than you, right? In this one, 2021 NBA Finals, the team is just better than you. Giannis played better. Drew Holiday played better. Chris Middleton played better. Budenholzer coached better. And it stung because, again, you were up 2-0. Devin Booker had an incredible finals run, incredible finals performance. And you never do know if the Suns are going to get back there. That's how fickle it is. So now we've got Dynabacks this year's collapse, Suns the 2021 finals collapse. Mm-hmm. Let's move over to the Cardinals. Okay. Steelers, Cardinals, 2008. <clears throat> screwed or not screwed, Craig? You know, I, I, if this is hard to say to Valley fans, but I've watched a lot of replays. He was in bounds. He was in bounds. My heart stopped just mm-hmm. for a second there. And I know Doug Tamara is going to watch this and agree oh, with me. Oh, Doug is going to be calling yeah. you and saying, thank you, Craig. Thank you for finally admitting the truth. And listen, it was a very close call, um, but... The thing that stands out to me in this game, well, aside from Harrison's return right before, before halftime, which Johnny Venerable went off on as the reason he hates Bruce Springsteen. You need to go watch that clip <laughs> on YouTube if you haven't already. The thing that jumped out at me, I had just started covering the Cardinals at that at the start of that playoff run, and nobody saw it coming. They're 9-7. and seven. Worst team in the playoffs. That's what everyone quotes. was saying. Yeah. In like in the worst playoff team in NFL history, mm-hmm. they were 6-0 and in the division. And nine and seven overall. So they went three and seven against the rest of the NFL. And the NFC West was god awful at that point. So everybody's like, there's no chance this team is doing anything. They got to get on this run. And then the Kurt Warner TD pass to Larry Fitzgerald, where he's looking up at the scoreboard <laughs> while he's running into the end zone to see where the pursuit is. That should have been an iconic moment. It still is in Valley history. But, but it, it's not, it, 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 it is like, it is iconic. Yeah. But it's iconic in the sense of, Oh, well, that could have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that that, would have been that cool. That could have been unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Remember that? Remember, touchdown catch. Remember that? And <laughs> We haven't started that yet, have we? 
We need to start that. Yeah. Listen, you don't know what we're talking about. You will at some point. The, the thing with this one, I do look ahead and I obviously, you know, being on, on the younger side of things, I look at the next two options that we're choosing from and it's hard for me to remember this Super Bowl against the Steelers as clearly as it is the 2014 mm-hmm. season, the 2021 season that we'll get into. But purely from a stakes perspective, this is the biggest one. Yeah. But like you said, this team had no expectations. And to even have a lead in the Super Bowl was something that if you go to the beginning of that season for Cardinals fans, you said, hey, you're going to have a, you don't you don't have a guarantee what's going to happen. Right. But you're going to have a lead in the Super Bowl. You take that season 100 times out of 100. It's on the opposite end when a team plays really well. And then they collapse. And we'll Mm -hmm. get to 2021 in a second. But first, let's stop at 2014. Carson Palmer tears his ACL. Bruce Arians, they were rolling. Carson Palmer, career rehabilitated. Everything was real nice for the Red Sea until it wasn't. I I really thought that team had an opportunity to Mm -hmm. win a Super Bowl. Yeah. They had had the swagger. They had the defense. They had the playmakers. Carson Palmer was amazing that season. And, And Bruce just just infuse this confidence in the team. I hadn't seen it. Obviously, I haven't covered the Cardinals forever, but we know the Cardinals history. Mm -hmm. Bruce infused the confidence in that group. They had a swagger, and it really felt like this could be a special season. And then on a completely innocuous play, he just steps wrong. He said the turf gave way, blows out his ACL, and you end up with Drew Stanton, and then eventually Ryan Lindley in the playoffs. You keep on going And he still almost won, as Bruce pointed out to me, with Ryan Lindley. But... Carson was so good that season. And I remember I was in the press room when he was walking out. He was going to leave, but then he did a detour and walked into the newsroom, held an impromptu news conference to talk to us. It was such a class act. And you could just, while he was trying to, yeah, he was trying to put a, you know, stiff upper lip on, but you could tell he knew that you don't get opportunities like this very long. He knew what was lost. It was just so hard to watch, and I had so much respect for him showing up in that moment right. to talk to us in spite of just this agony. I mean, he admitted he was crying. He was crying yeah. in the aftermath of that, and of course, Cardinals fans were too after that playoff performance. Well, right. The, the reason why this is a very <clears throat> devastating moment, but to me, I don't always – I don't equate injuries to collapses, right? So – Carson Palmer tearing his ACL. If Carson Palmer is able to play that game, again, you almost run with one with Ryan Lindley. You could argue that if Drew Stanton played that game, that you win that game against Carolina. (laughs) I can't put that on the whole team, though. What I can put on the whole team, what I can put on the coaching staff through and through, front to back, is the 2021 season. Now, I was covering the Cardinals for this season. I do remember all of this very vividly, starting 7-0, starting 10-2, Kyler Murray, this is before the, oh, all he does is play Call of Duty narrative started. Oh, this is before <laughs> right. the homework clause. This is before all the extension talk. This is before Cliff Kingsbury's absolute demise. Obviously, injuries derailed this season. But you end after starting again 7-0, 10-2, with one of the most embarrassing playoff performances I have ever seen in my entire life against the Los Angeles Rams, your division rival. This is... To me, the one that's the rawest and most real because I experienced it in obviously years that I remember better. Yeah. And that's what our poll says as well. But the stakes weren't as high. Where where do you stand on 2021 versus the Super Bowl? I'm taking the Super Bowl. I think I think in our polls there's a lot of recency bias. Yeah, that's very fair. But you're this close to winning a Super Bowl. You're Mm -hmm. you're this close to winning a title. I'm I'm sorry. That it's hard to get past that magnitude. Okay. And again, Ken Wisenhunt said at the time, we knew we left him too much time on the clock. Mm-hmm. He knew what Ben Roethlisberger was capable of. But on the flip side, you know, you, you've got you one drive to win score. it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, play some defense. Make a right. play. Yeah. <laughs> make a play, play and win the Super Bowl. And it's a game of inches, too. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it really, yeah. really comes, maybe centimeters, right? It yes. really comes down to yes. just a few centimeters is the reason why they lost the game. Okay, so we'll stick with the Super Bowl for the Cardinals. So we have the Super Bowl for the Cardinals, the finals for the Suns. That just stings to all say. And then, of course, this year, the Diamondbacks blowing their wild card lead. Let's go with the last team before we hit a break, and that is AS. You, Craig, I'll let you start. Where do you want to start with ASU? Because guess what? There's a lot to choose from. Yeah, there's a lot. And and this was really tough to whittle down. There, I, I got a lot of suggestions for this one. And and I'm happy to say that I wasn't around for this first one. Okay, good. Because you probably assumed I was, didn't you? No, I didn't. Okay, thank you for that. The 1981 NCAA tournament second round. Kansas beats Arizona State after ASU got a bye. It was a number two seed. When you look at that roster, 
three NBA first round picks. Found three. Him. Fat Woo. Lieber, Byron Scott, and Alton Lister. And then two second round picks. This was a team that was stacked. That was probably yeah. legendary coaches, Ned Wilk's best team that he ever fielded for the Sun Devils. And yet they go out in the second round and it wasn't particularly close. They got hammered by Kansas. That's a tough one. I think when I talk to the old timers, they still remember that one as one that really stung because they thought that team with with the obvious talent it had and great guard play, which is always so key right. in the NCAA tournament, they bow out without even much of a fight. That many NBA players is insane. Yeah. And and not just players that made to the NBA, but players that actually did see a good amount of success. And yeah, you've heard career. of those guys. Yeah, you've heard of those guys. <laughs> and some people might be like, Alton Lister, it's like, for those of you who aren't familiar with that era of basketball, you probably don't know who Alton Lister is. But he he wasn't just some dude who had no. who had five games in the NBA and then left. He he was around for a little bit. Now, obviously, this one is the last one in our poll, just because I think time wise, of course, yeah. like you mentioned, recency bias. But I think another thing that goes along in all of this is March Madness, the NCAA tournament. It's so fickle. You see so many upsets. True. Again, probably could have included about five for Arizona basketball if they were included in this one. It's it's a little tougher to say. Oh, you know, like there's it's it's the collapse. But to right? get blown out, to get blown out is tough. To get and blown got, out is you tough. got fat. I mean, you you talked about Alt Lister. Fat Lieber was an all star. Byron yeah. Scott played alongside Magic Johnson yeah. and, and was, was winning good. NBA titles. Yeah, was one of the yes. best players on yes. that team winning the NBA titles. Yeah, yes. fat, fat Lieber was the most underrated Mister Triple Double yeah. that the NBA's ever seen. I just don't think that that holds a candle to mm. the Rose Bowl. Yeah, that's. Mm. I mean, just saying it, right? Just saying it. Yeah, and and when you when you look at the stars on that team, Jake Plummer mm -hmm. had just a ridiculous year. He was a Heisman Trophy finalist. Always seemed to find a way to will this team to victory. And I'm I'm not saying it was only Jake because they had a phenomenal defense. They shut out Nebraska, mm -hmm. the two time defending champs, who were on I think it was a 26, 26. game yeah. winning streak. They shut them out nineteen nothing, and that was that was their. Basically, the wake-up call for the rest of the nation. Hey, yep. ASU is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And they were. They had some unbelievable victories over the the Southern California schools, which, At again, the Rose Bowl. As we stated <laughs> earlier, they always like beating. Phoenix always likes beating L.A. Then you get to the Rose Bowl, and it, again, to add, to, to stick a little knife in, who's the quarterback for Ohio State? He's not just some guy from Ohio or any other state. No, no, no. no. He Mountain played View. at Mesa Mountain View, was winning state championships there, and then he ends up at Ohio State. You get a lead again because of Jake, the scramble, the snake. Mm -hmm. He eluded guys and got into the end zone, and you're thinking, my God, they're going to win a national championship. They're undefeated. Two PIs, and we can talk about whether those PIs were legit, but then a blown coverage on mm -hmm. – Future Cardinal David, David Boston, Boston for the game-winning touchdown. But 19 seconds. Come on. 19 seconds left, right? Again, the end of the game, you have a lead. Yeah. Obviously, you can point to refs for a lot of things, and, and people do, and you can argue if they're PIs or not. Even to be in that position where, hey, you got two PIs, you still lost because of a blown coverage. And, and a redshirt freshman, that's a tough spot yeah. to be in with the Rose Bowl on the line with the lead. That's a tough spot. Yeah. And, and, and that's a moment that, you know, ASU football has has failed to put themselves back in that position that close to winning something that important since then. That, to me, it's very clearly the winner. Uh, winner, jeez. The biggest loser. Our poll on PHNX Sun Devils, but let's also consider the end of the Dennis Erickson era in yeah. 2011. The, to also season. throw in there. Because uh, uh, they, 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 were, they were riding high, baby. Brock that was Osweiler. one of the most bizarre seasons I've ever covered in any sport. What do you just, remember? I just remember how hot they were early on. And, and it looked like they were putting everything together. Brock Osweiler was setting school records. Fontes Perfect had that unbelievable game on primetime against USC at Sun Devil Stadium where he just mm. owned Mac Barkley. <laughs> that was that was shaping up to be a really special season. I don't think they were a national championship contender that right. season, but they were a force in the pack. And then You think they could have won the pack? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe if they had a kicker for starters, but everything seemed to collapse at the same time. There was there was weird stuff happening internal on that internally on that team. But I was at the Rose Bowl for that UCLA game when they gave up the third and twenty nine play. What are you doing? How do you give that up? Just put the game away right there. Shut mm -hmm. UCLA down. UCLA scores, but Brock Osweiler still puts them in position for the game winning field goal. I'm just gonna say this because uh, I've never said it publicly, it. but. I'm on the field with Doug Holler, who was covering the game for the Republic at the time, and Alex Garut had already missed two kicks in that game. Doug looks at me and says, is he going to make it? 
And I said, not a chance. Duh. <laughs> and then when you heard Pain. the sound of the kick, it just sounded sick from the start. Mm -hmm. It was short. It was wide right. It had no chance. And everything just collapsed, collapsed from there. They, they didn't. They didn't win again. They had the crazy Las Vegas Bowl where, like, guys were out partying the night before the bowl game, including, I think, the coaching staff. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Dennis Erickson era was over. But there's no comparison between that season and, and the Rose Bowl, Probably even not. though it still sucked. Yeah, it was, it was a crazy collapse to witness. Right. But, when, again, when you're With talking about that national championship this close— and then it gets ripped away. Yeah, that that's number one for me. All right, uh, Coyotes. I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep this relatively quick. <laughs> Is there any chance the 1999 Western Conference quarterfinals of the 2019-2020 <laughs> season even comes close to 23-24, where the Coyotes franchise collapses within itself and relocates to Salt Lake City? No. Is there any argument? No. no. Okay. For this one, I mean, the poll is correct. So yeah, it was this, overwhelming. That one is 82% with Coyotes <laughs> relocate. I think the other ones were just fat fingers. They accidentally clicked the other ones. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know how you can genuinely take any singular loss or any season collapse and put it with the collapse of a franchise. And what we're going to do on the other side of this break is talk about if any of the games that we had just talked about in detail come close to the Coyotes relocating. <laughs> because unfortunately, we're talking about so many Arizona sports teams hitting the floor but you want your floors to be a lot cleaner than the ones that we are talking about. And that's why you want to call Empire today. The words easy, quick, and convenient are an easy, quick, and convenient way to talk about Empire today. But there's so much more below the surface because they're not just trying to get in, get out, and get a quick buck. They are trying to make sure that you have the best floors in your home. That's why they're not going to guarantee you the lowest prices. Because if they did, Craig, they'd be guaranteeing you that they're going to put floor in your home that they wouldn't put in theirs. And do you <laughs> want that to happen if no, you sir. are making an investment like this? Not a chance you have a beautiful home how important is flooring to your home? it's huge it's everything it i care about my flooring and they have unbelievable options we've talked about this we have some in our own studio we do have some in our yeah. own studio it's held up great plus mm -hmm. you can check out which one's going to match perfectly for your style with their virtual floor visualizer plus they can get somebody in your home today to give you an estimate so go ahead and schedule that free in-home estimate and if i didn't mention uh you can also save 350 dollars off when you use the promo code phnx some restrictions do apply see empire today.com slash phnx for detailed it's been a rugged road for a lot of these Valley sports teams, but I'm going to spin that to a positive way because our friends over at Rugged Road just have fantastic coolers. They're all about creating innovative and durable outdoor gear for adventurers who demand the best. What if I told you you could put ice and your drinks and maybe some food you want to keep cool for a Saturday game for ASU and you could leave that cooler and all that stuff in there until the next Saturday or in this case it'd be Friday against Utah and all those contents would still be cool. You got to love that. I was afraid you were going to talk about me being an outdoorsman, which I'm not. No, I'm You won't see me but cap it. But you know what I think I could use it for? You know, Halloween's around the corner. You do like to host a good get together. Well, Halloween's around the corner. You know, sometimes you like to do the trick or treating out in your driveway. It's a little hot in Arizona, in case mm -hmm. you haven't noticed the temperatures haven't dropped yet. I can have that cooler right next to me and keep my water. refreshments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might even keep the candy in there so the chocolate doesn't melt. Ooh, that's just actually saying. a really good idea. I mean, Rugged Road's perfect if you're having a tailgate, if you're just having a party. Some great design features of them. Floatability. You can put it in a pool. It's going to stay upright, lightweight, durable, designed to last. Again, keeps everything cold for seven or more days. Get ready for your summer adventures. And summers 24 7 here in Arizona with Rugged Road Coolers. Head to ruggedroadoutdoors.com. Use code PHNX for 10% off your order. Lightweight, durable, always floating upright, perfect on land or in water. So leave that old, heavy cooler at home. Get yourself a better cooler for a new season. Rugged Road, your ultimate outdoor companion. Let's go one by one with our winners, and we're doing it like a heavyweight fight. We're going to wank them? It's Coyotes okay. relocating versus. All of the other competitors, so let's go in the same order that we talked okay. about it. Diamondbacks, this season, seven-game wild card collapse. Is there any argument that that's even close? No. No. Okay. Not with losing a team. And listen, I'm, I'm just going to say this right now. If we're ranking these, and I don't mind ranking them. We can. I know it's fresh in everyone's mind, and I know it's really painful. Mm -hmm. That Diamondbacks collapse to me, that drops all the way to the bottom. That's dead last. It's fifth on this list of the okay. top ones. Okay, so then let's go to, I don't know if this would be your next one. Let's just let's just go to ASU. Let's go okay. to ASU. Rose Bowl. Is that, I'm assuming that's higher than Diamondbacks. It's higher than Diamondbacks. Is that, so here's a spoiler alert. Coyotes is going to win. We're figuring out the <laughs> rankings underneath. But just yeah. to paint the picture, yeah. is it even remotely close? I don't think when you lose your team, yeah, you bad. lost your team. <laughs> we don't bad. have an NHL franchise to kick around or talk about anymore. It's kind of hard to top that. What was interesting to me, Eric, is how you rank the next three because the Cardinals 
lost at the end of the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. ASU lost at the end of the Rose Bowl. And the Suns had a 2-0 lead in the NBA mm -hmm. Finals. How do you rank those? I don't even know the answer. Is it a three-way tie? I think it comes down to personally, what are you more invested That's in? That's fair. Whichever, right. you know, which, whichever your team you're a fan of the and most. I think, I think also it comes to like what's closer. Well, the Suns were up 2-0. Mm -hmm. Both of these football games were coming down to the last few minutes. Yep. Right? The Suns eventually were down in the series and lost 4-2. It didn't even go to game seven. Now, that is a big collapse. It is. But does it sting the most? I think I would probably put the Suns. And I... Fourth? The Suns are my team. Yep. Sun, Suns are my team. That's what I care about the most. So like personal pain, that's probably one, but taking like an objective point of view, blowing a series lead versus collapsing in the final minutes when you could taste the championship or the Rose Bowl yeah, right that's there. Fair. So I'm sticking gonna, four. So we'll put Suns. So then we go Cardinals and we go ASU. Cardinals <sighs> second, ASU third. Here, here's the it. tough split because... Yeah, I, I don't know because they're both last second wins. I guess, you, I guess I guess ASU's the super, technically a little closer yeah, to the end, right? Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, I guess. They're, I mean, they both they both they're both right there. there. They both they're literally right come there. down to the last second. Yeah, I, I don't know how you rank those two. I, I I think you're right. It's it's whichever team you're more invested in. I mean, the Super Bowl is kind of a big deal. It's it is the American sport. It's if, the American pastime. If you want to maybe so. give like it, it, for ASU, it, you know, they did have that season where they almost won the national championship and they didn't, but yeah. this wasn't a national championship. Like, Hey, and it wasn't guaranteed, right? right. We would have to wait for the poll. So maybe that's right. the reason we slide ASU to three Down. because put the super, Cardinals too. super bowl winner. You, again, you overcome this, this thought of, Hey, you're not even supposed to be in the playoffs. Yeah. Then you're up. You have a lead over the Steelers. Yeah. You gave them time, but you had every opportunity in the world to get a stop. And then you have one of the more controversial plays in Valley sports history to Stick the nail. All right, right we'll put in that number two. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, number one is the Coyotes collapsing. Are you crying yet? Well, through your tears, make sure you hit that like button. Even if you disliked this topic, hit the like button <laughs> for Craig Morgan and catch all of his fantastic work over at gophx.com, including the written version of what we just dissected here on video and on audio. Of course, Craig, also for you ASU fans, especially you ASU hockey fans, did a little get to know 10 things you need to know about this ASU hockey team as they embark on what will be an extremely exciting season and the best conference in college hockey. It should be a really good time. Make sure you check out all of his fantastic work of course he's covering the cardinals for phnx cardinals you can follow them at phnx underscore cardinals on twitter you're craig j morgan is that s it? s hey, it's all right some somebody has a middle initial j i'm sorry for messing that up but no now worries. you know craig s morgan out on twitter make sure you give him a follow as he covers the cardinals and absolutely everything going on in the valley of course you can catch me on phnx sun devils five days a week we have a post game against kansas coming up on saturday you can follow that at phnx underscore sun devils if you need suns wildcats cardinals hockey content you can find all of that right here on phnx sports by subscribing hitting that like button you can even turn notifications on if you feel so inclined you're going to follow me at e-r-i-k-r-u-b-y and we will be back next week for I'm, I'm crossing my fingers a way happier edition of Southwest <laughs> Bias because episode number one this week was about the Cardinals loss to the Commanders and episode number two, wow. well, I love talking to you, Craig. We just went 30 minutes on pure misery. Yeah. So hopefully next week it's a lot happier on Southwest Bias. Get that stuff out of here. It's Southwest Bias. <laughs> <laughs>